Recently, someone asked me, they said, why, why, why in the world, how in the world is something like discouragement connected to something like pride? You can't afford to be discouraged. You're too weak. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Essential Presents. Before we go any further on this, I want to clarify because this might be what the person was asking. You know, sometimes we are facing things in life that just like, man, oh man, I am exhausted. I am so worn down. Our hearts get sad. Our hearts get broken. It's easy to become discouraged when it comes to the circumstances and situations in the seasons in our lives. And that's not what I'm talking about. Let me just reiterate this. When it comes to how hard life can be sometimes, and those moments where it's just, I feel beaten up, right? Maybe you're in a place right now where you would say, yeah, that's that's my experience. I feel beaten up right now. And maybe you're, you're discouraged because it's like, I don't know if I see any way forward. That isn't necessarily connected to pride, right? That just might be, I'm tired. And again, I, I might not have the hope that I once had. Or maybe I don't have the hope that God is inviting me to have when it comes to moving forward. That might be a video for another time. When it comes to the kind of discouragement that's connected to pride, this is the kind I mean. I'm discouraged with myself. That's the kind I mean. Not, not I'm discouraged because I'm so, so tired of, of fighting. I'm so tired of our situation. I'm so tired of, you know, all those external things. When I'm discouraged with myself, I want to give up. Discourage and despair are very, very closely connected. And despair is connected to pride. Here's what I mean. I thought that I would be better. And it turns out that I'm not. Right? A lot of times that's what we're saying. But when it comes to spiritual discouragement, that is at the heart of all of this. If you've been pursuing the Lord for any amount of time, whether that be one day, and now you're listening to this video or watching this video, or that could be the last 50 years of my life, I've been pursuing the Lord. And I keep falling. And I'm discouraged by that. That's connected to pride. Why? Because of this. Because Underneath that discouragement is that mantra, I thought that I would be better. I thought my self-assessment, my assessment of myself was that I would be over this, whatever the thing is that is discouraging me. I, I, I thought that I would be past this. Maybe you have a sin in your life, maybe a situation in your life where it's just like, oh, I thought that I would be free of this at this point. The mantra underneath is, I thought that I would be better than this. Another way to say it is, I don't want to have to need God's grace so much. I don't want to have to need God's mercy so much. And I'm discouraged because I need God's grace. We have the infinite amount of God's mercy. Like that the God has no, no limits to his mercy. God has no limits to the number of times he will stoop down and pick us up and put us as high as possible. There's no limit to this. I think Pope Francis was the one who said it, right? That, that God does not get tired of forgiving us or giving us mercy. We get tired of asking for it. That's discouragement. I'm so tired of asking for God's help because I thought that I would be better. Why is that connected to pride? Because pride is that. Pride says, I want to not have to need God so much. If, if the problem is pride, right? The problem is, is that since I have, I have a wrong sense of self, right? I thought that I would be better and I'm not. The remedy is humility. Like truly, the, the remedy is humility. How, how do we grow in humility? How about this? One, you know that humility is not is not uh, beating yourself up. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less in that sense that, okay, so if I'm going to get rid of pride and grow in humility, it's not I need to gang up on myself and <laughs> punch myself in the humility bone. No, you do not have to beat yourself up. That's not humility. So number one, humility is not beating yourself up. How about by thinking of yourself less? Or how about this? How about G.K. Chesterton once said, the reason why angels can fly is because they take themselves lightly. To develop the ability to laugh at yourself is a great gift. Satan cannot laugh at himself. He could not possibly take a step out of himself and set aside his pride, set aside his ego, and laugh at his situation, laugh, laugh at his circumstances, laugh at his own weakness. But you and I can. That is an incredible sign of humility. Now, you say, well, no, I'm not going to laugh at my sin. Yeah, you're right. Don't laugh at your sin. We don't laugh at evil. We can, though, we can, however, laugh at our own weakness. We can laugh at the reality of, wow, Lord, maybe you have that mantra. I thought that I would be, I would be better than this, but I'm not. To be able to laugh at this, oh my gosh, Lord, I look at me. Oh, I thought that I would be better than this, but I'm not, and I need you. That's it. That's the growth and humility that every one of us needs. God, I thought that I'd be over this by now. <laughs> apparently, apparently this knucklehead needs some more growing. Apparently this knucklehead needs your grace more, and that's okay. Why? Because God gives us his grace as much as we need and more. So here's the invitation. The next time you find yourself discouraged, 
take a beat, realize, okay, wait a second. My mantra is I thought that I'd be better than this and then realize, but I'm not. Okay. All that means is God, I need you again. I mean, even, even to re recognize that, that even the most profound weakness you have in your life because of Jesus is actually the road by which you can get to Jesus. Man, if, if I didn't need God so much, I would forget him quickly. So I'm grateful for my weaknesses. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm still on this process as well. I still hate my weaknesses. I still hate when I fall. I still hate my failings. But I love him. And so I'm not discouraged. I remember years ago, one of our missionaries, she said, why am I so surprised when I find out that weakness is actually weak? Why am I so surprised when my weakness is actually weak? We shouldn't be surprised. We can laugh at it because we have a savior. Again, we're not laughing at evil. We're not laughing at sin, but we can chuckle at ourselves and say, here I am, Lord, I need you. One of my favorite prayers was of a man named St. Philip Neri. And apparently St. Philip Neri was, I think, the, the saint of Rome, he, the joyful saint. He, he, he was full of joy, but his prayer, apparently, every morning before he left his home and went out into the world was, God, please watch out for Philip today. Because if you give him the chance, he will betray you. Right? The idea like, God, God, watch out for me. Take care of me. I know this. I know this. If, if, I, if you give me the chance to sin, I, I, I know my heart. I know my weakness. If you give me the chance to betray you, I will. So help me. I believe that one of the reasons why St. Philip Neri is so closely associated with joy and laughter is because of that. Because he could laugh at himself. Not only his strengths and his gifts and his all good things, he could also laugh at his weakness because he knew that in his, just like St. Paul, in my weaknesses, he is strong. In my sufferings, he is glorified. And remember this last thing, here's the last thing you guys, I'm just so, so, I'm so convinced of this because if we miss this, we miss out on so much joy. Every time you and I need God, we have God. The deeper we have a need for God, meaning the more broken we are, the weaker we are, the more desperate we are for him, the more we get of him. The greater the weakness in our heart, the greater his power comes to save us. We also know this, the greater the sin, the greater the mercy. The greater the fall, the greater the grace God gives to the person who asks for God to lift them back up. This is so true. And this is so powerful that St. Paul, when he discussed this, he said, what then? Shall we, you know, sin even greater so as to get more grace? And he says, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> That's, that is a work, reworking the equation in a bad way. So don't do that. Don't fall mightily so you can ask God for his mercy mightily. But if you find yourself having fallen mightily, do not be discouraged. God, I thought that I'd be better than this. Apparently, I'm not. And apparently, I need you in a way that I had never realized. I thought I'd be over this by now, but apparently I'm not. And I need you even more desperately than I ever possibly could have imagined. That's humility. And it's also hope. How could you not love a God who comes to our aid in a weakness like that? He never gets discouraged. He never gets tired of loving you or loving me. We sometimes just get tired of asking for that love. Anyways, from all of us here to Sensei Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. What am I saying when I'm discouraged with, my, with myself? What I'm saying is, he could never possibly take a step back out of his own pride, out of his own ego, and say, my little machine made a little noise.